Captain Apollo 11, over. Roger, go ahead, 11, over. Are you picking up our TV signal? That's affirmative. Uh, we have it up on the out of four now. Uh, the uh, focus is a little bit out. Uh, we see the Earth in the center of the screen. Uh, still have a little white dot in the bottom of the camera, apparently. And uh, see some land masses uh, in the center. I, at least I guess that's what it is. Uh, it's uh, very hazy at this time on our out of four over. Let me uh, change. I believe that's where we just came from. It is, huh? Well, I'm really looking at the bad, uh, at a bad screen here. Stand by one. Hey, you're right. Not bad enough. Not hey, you're getting right more on your spot. screen now. It's not bad enough not finding the right landing spot. We're going to have the right planet. I'll never live that one down. Uh, we're making it get smaller and smaller here to make sure that it really is the one we're leaving. Oh, that's enough, you guys. Uh, 11, that was a good picture okay, there. Okay, that's enough of the moon. Okay, that's enough of the moon, Charlie. We're getting set up now for some inside pictures. Right. I know there's a, a lot of scientists from uh, a number of countries standing by to see the lunar samples, and uh, we thought you'd be interested in seeing that they really are here. Uh, these two boxes are the sample return containers. They, they're vacuum packed uh, containers that were closed in a vacuum on the lunar surface, sealed and then uh, brought inside the lamb and put inside uh, these fiberglass bags, zippered and resealed around the outside, around the outside and placed in these uh, receptacles in the side of the command module. These are the two boxes. And uh, as soon as we uh, get onto the ship, I'm sure these uh, boxes will immediately be uh, transferred uh, and uh, delivery started to the lunar receiving laboratory. Uh, these boxes include the samples of the various types of rock, the uh, ground mass of the soil, the sand and silt, and uh, the uh, particle collector for the solar wind experiment and uh, the core tubes that took uh, depth samples of the lunar surface. Uh, Roger, Neil. Thank you much for that description. Uh, we've got a pretty dark picture down here. Could you check your f-stop? Uh, we'd like you to have it, uh, see if you could open it up a little bit, over. Okay, our monitor showed that to be very bright. Yeah, we're, between, we're down around uh, between, well, around F4, which we thought would be plenty light. Uh, we'll lighten it up some more. Well, we'd appreciate it. It's uh, pretty dark, dark on all our monitors here. 
Okay, fine. That's looking a lot better now, Neil. There's Buzz. Houston, we have an excellent picture now, over. Yeah, how do you read me, Charlie? Uh, bye, bye now, Buzz, over. Okay. Uh, more mundane affairs, now that we've left the moon, I'd like to uh, trace through a little bit for you. Development that has taken place in the uh, food department. I'm sure you've already type of a uh, drink container. Now, a little later, Mike will show you how the uh, water gun uh, operates with its new uh, filter to take out the uh, hydrogen. Essentially, this uh, water gun is put in, in this end and filled up this bag with water, and the uh, drink then uh, dissolves in the water, and uh, this end of the mouth feeding. Uh, likewise, we have uh, other foods that are more solid nature, you can probably see this uh, shrimp cocktail meal. This afternoon, while the two of us had uh, salmon salad. Another early development was the uh, use of bite-sized foods. Eleven, Houston, uh, Buzz, you're breaking up badly. Uh, uh, Would you, you check your box over? All right, how am I coming through now, Charlie? All right, you're, you're very clear when you come through. It's just that your box is not uh, keying at uh, every word. Over. Okay. These bite-sized uh, objects were designed to uh, uh, remove the problem of having so many crumbs floating around in the cabin. So they designed uh, a particular size that uh, would be able to uh, go into the mouth all at once. I think since uh, all of our experience, we've discovered that we can uh, progress a good bit further than that back to uh, some of the type meals that uh, we have on Earth. As a matter of fact, on this flight, we've carried along pieces of bread, and uh, along with the bread, we have uh, a uh, ham spread. And I'll show you, I hope, how easy it is to spread some ham. Houston, we notice your roll rate increasing. Uh, would you please uh, see if you can uh, bring that uh, down to about zero for us so we'll be losing a high gain shortly. Over. We can also use uh, zero gravity to demonstrate uh, many things that we've all learned in school. I'd like to demonstrate uh, briefly uh, how easy it is to explain the action of a gyroscope. Uh, if I spin this can, we know that uh, according to the uh, equations of uh, uh, motion that we would expect that if once this is given a spin about, and has a spin axis in this direction, if we give it a particular torque, and if I, I'll do this by pushing my hands against it in this fashion once it's spinning, 
by the equations, we can predict that as I put this torque on it, it will in fact rotate this direction. Let's see how well this works out. That as I applied the torque this way, it rotated this way. He says, pretty good demonstration. Houston, this next is a little demonstration for the kids at home, all kids everywhere for that matter. Uh, I was going to show you how you drink water out of a spoon, but I'm afraid I filled the spoon too full and... Uh, if I'm not careful, I'm going to spill water right over the sides. Can you can you see the water slapping around in the top of the spoon, kids? That's primitive, 11. Okay, well, as I say, I was going to show you, but I'm afraid I filled it too full and it's going to spill over the side. I tell you what, I just I just turn this one over and uh, get rid of the water and start all over again. Okay. Okay. And you can see up here, we don't know where over is. Uh, one uh, up is as good as another. That really is water, though, I'll show you. That's really not the way we drank. We really have a water gun, which I'll show you. There's the water gun. This cylindrical thing on the end of it is a uh, filter with uh, several membranes. One allows uh, water to pass, but not any gas. The other allows gas to pass, but not any water. So by routing uh, the gaseous water, which comes from our uh, tank, through this filter, we're enabled to uh, drink purified water without the gas in it, filtered water. And uh, of course, all we do to uh, to get it started is just pull the trigger. Sort of messy. I haven't been at this very long. It's uh, the same system that the Spaniards used to drink out of wine skins at bullfights. Only I think it's even more fun. Well, be seeing you, kids. Uh, thank you from all the kids in the world here in the Moker who uh, can't tell the Earth from the moon. <laughs> all right, just stand by one and we'll get you that Earth for you. Looks like you need a wine skin up there, Mike. That'd be nice. Okay, uh, K-11, Houston, I have a picture now. Uh, that's affirmative. I refuse to bite on this one, though. You tell us. Okay, this uh, should uh, be getting larger, and... Uh, if it is, it's uh, the place we're coming home to. Roger. No matter where 
safe you travel. It's always nice to get home. We concur, 11. We'd be happy to have you back.